Right, let's move. We've covered, as we do every morning, an awful lot of ground today. And as you know, we're about free speech and we're about freedom of expression here on the platform. And the champions of free speech in New Zealand are the Free Speech Union and they have launched a new crusade. And I think a, a worthy one, essentially, I would say, against cancel culture. It is an interesting uh, tale, but alas, I think, one that is all too common in small towns and districts around New Zealand. To tell us about this latest issue, we are joined now from the Free Speech Union by Jonathan Aileen. Uh, Jonathan, it's nice to talk to you. We've been waiting for you to decide whether to pull the trigger on this campaign. Uh, It all started down in Marlborough. Tell us what the genesis of of this was. Well, there's an organisation called Let Kids Be Kids that is touring around the country uh, seeking to provoke a conversation uh, around some of the material that's in the uh, sexuality and relationships cr- uh, curriculum that has been taught in schools and, and, and some other shifts that are occurring in society. Now, now, Sean, look, to be honest, I, uh, I think that at face level, Let Kids Be Kids is probably one of the most uh, innocuous titles or, or, or names that, that can exist. I, I'm not sure there's many people out there disagreeing with that. You scratch below the surface, maybe some people disagree with it, but this seems like something we should all be able to come around and agree on. Okay, and, and whatever yes, they do, they're not breaking the law, they're not preaching hatred as far as we know, or hatred against any group or minority? Certainly not. Not at all. And uh, and as they go around, they've had as uh, a, a number of uh, the other stories that you've covered would know uh, issues getting access to public venues. When they went to Marlborough District Libraries, uh, rate payers, local residents there were seeking to host what they were calling a meet and greet, just to have a conversation around this. And Sean, if, if we agree with free speech, we agree with the idea that if there is speech or there are ideas that we disagree with, the thing we need to do is organize and challenge those ideas with better ideas. So this is exactly the way you should seek to challenge beliefs or opinions that you disagree with. So you go to a public venue, it's a library, it's involved in ideas and thought, that's what libraries are for, and you say, we're a group, we want to use your venue to have a little bit of a, what I would call a cookie push. A meet and greet to talk about the ideas and why we're touring the country. Pretty simple, right? And the library comes back and says, it would seem to us that you're not an inclusive group. And one of the criteria for use of our rooms is that groups not discriminate and that they are inclusive. And so we will exclude you uh, because you're not inclusive. And so this is just one of those profound ironies that uh, in, in the name of inclusion, in the name of tolerance, in the name of diversity, we will not tolerate any perspectives that are different from, from ours. ours. And, Who set that and, policy? And, Who set that policy at the library? It, it, it's, it's set by the council. Uh, we're going to be looking into that, Sean, because I wouldn't be surprised if policies like this exist uh, amongst many other councils as well. It is the council for Marlborough District, it is the, the policy for Marlborough District Council, but it is uh, one that's probably been supported by um, the likes of local government New Zealand or other outfits, perhaps the, the Library Association, that helps set uh, common policies across the country. This is the basic point for us. The law is clear that libraries do not get to discriminate on ideological grounds who can use their facilities. That is entirely in contravention to the Bill of Rights Act. The, the Free Speech Union has contributed to the case law already in this place and we've actually drafted legislation because we think there needs to be statute to recognise... There's a, there's a private duty. member's bill that would prevent this in the cake tin at the moment or in the biscuit tin at the moment, isn't there? That, that's right. So so the, the Free Speech Union drafted that and uh, and Andy Foster has has taken that member's bill up and and what that would do would, would put a positive duty uh, on public venues to respect freedom of expression. To be honest, Sean, that's already the law. We, we, this would just be making it all more explicit. The Bill of Rights Act already protects... Uh, now, you r- gave, because like I've that. been bugging you to come on and talk about this all week, you gave the Marlborough District Council and the Library some time to have a, a good hard think about what they're doing, didn't you? Well, that's right. So Friday last week, we contacted them after a a member approached us on this issue. And we said, look, as far as we can tell with the facts that we've been provided, this is a pretty open shut case. Your your group, uh, your your staff 
have, have seemed to have acted just entirely illegally, and I'm not sure what sort of defense you would like to proffer. Just saying, it would appear to us your group is in, uninclusive, uh, and so we, you know you can't have the library space. Yeah. They didn't ask any questions. They didn't seek what the what what the the criteria were. Uh, we're not sure who who gets to define quote inclusive. And so it, it seems they've done as little work possible to come to the conclusion that these guys certainly must not yeah. be allowed to express their opinions there. We, we said, look, we're going to give you till Wednesday to come back. Otherwise, we will be pursuing with legal action. Uh, we didn't hear back from them until late Saturday afternoon after we had spoken to media and, and put a blast mm. out about this. And, and, and all we got back was, hang on a second, I thought you told us we had till, till Wednesday to, to, to come back to you on this. Uh, now I'm getting, I'm getting emails and angry phone calls. And I thought that was quite telling. Mark Wheeler, the chief executive of Marlborough District Council, was far more concerned by the fact that his council might now be getting some bad press rather than he was concerned about the fact that his staff may have actually acted entirely illegally and discriminated against ratepayers. And so yeah. I'm not sure those priorities exactly...